my name is Angie and I'm going to be doing a review today of the iHarvest from IG Works. I'm going to go over everything that you get in your kit, how it works, and kind of give you a little bit of my progress. And then I hope to do some videos later so you can see how well it's working for me. This is a first for me. I've never done hydroponics before, so I am learning, but hopefully we can learn together. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, you can find my Instagram account at Grow with Angie. And I try and do like daily pictures of the plants and how they're going and different things that I'm doing um, to make sure that the plants are healthy and that they're doing well. So when you order an iHarvest, it's going to come in three boxes. It took about a week to get the beginning part of the kit. So my first box was everything that I needed for the tower. My second box was my LED grow lights. And the third box came a day later. In that, it had all of my growing food, my pH, my testers, and all of those little gadgets that I'm gonna show you here in a minute. But make sure you wait for that third box. In my box, it had little wing nuts and screws that you need to put into the base of this. And so in the beginning video where you see me put it together really fast, I didn't have those and I had to take it back down and put those in. So that was a mistake. So make sure you have three boxes, um, all complete at the house, ready to go before you start putting here together. Make sure you have a flat surface as well. I have um, hardwood floors and this is in the uh, wall of my dining room. So in your kit, uh, with everything with the main unit, it's gonna be the base, which is your water tank, and then this the bottom one is your filtration. There's big mesh pads that go down there. That's where you're gonna need those little screws and wing nuts. And then each tray that holds your pods for your vegetables and your plants. One trick, too, that I will tell you is that in the instruction booklet, it said to take each one of these trays and first put your trellis in, then snap a tray, then put a trellis and snap a tray. I actually found that to be very difficult to get it to line up. So if you watch in the fast forward, you'll see a little bit of a playing around for the first one and then after that they go really quickly because what I did is each section, I flipped it upside down, put the trellis in it, flipped it back up and then lined the trellis up to snap it in place and it went so much easier. You're also going to get your water pump, and it's running right now. I don't know if you can hear that, but it did kick on. Um, you're going to get a water pump that goes in the base. In each section, there's a little ring that your tube is going to go through. Another little mistake that I made, not a big deal, was as I was doing it, I was really pulling on that tube because I thought I was going to be short when I got to the top, or I thought I would need a lot of tube. And it's perfectly measured, so don't be yanking on it because then when you're up here, you're trying to pull it back down to get it all locked into place. And then the top section actually has a little T PVC pipe. And that PVC pipe is where your water falls out and rains out and goes down into each pod. So once you get that screwed on, then you can put this, your top lid on. There is a little screw and a latch to go into your wall. I was not 100% sure as I just repainted this room. I didn't know if I want to put a screw in the wall, but I'm kind of happy I did because now I know it's secure. And if you have anything like heavy tomatoes or beans or anything that's really going to be pulling on the front of it, you're going to know that's not going to like topple over in the middle of the night. And then you would just have a horrible mess. So in the base, we'll kind of start from the bottom and work our way up. You have this little um, lid and that's so you can check your water and then this whole piece does come off too for draining your water if you need to get it out. I do recommend a small cool sump pump that does not come with the kit. Um, so there's only two things that I purchased on my own and that was a little mini sump pump for when I need to get the water out. They recommend that you change the water every six months so it shouldn't be too much of a big deal. I do add water every once in a while just from evaporation. I do get a little um, spray on the trellises. You can see some water dots, um, but that's just because my plants are so little right now. Once it's all filled in, I won't be getting that. But this access allows you to get in and take out your filter 
and there is a little filter pocket right here and that helps with any debris that is raining down from your little pods. This is also the easiest way to check your pH levels, your food levels, and I'll show you what comes with it to do that as well. But a good way to just quickly check your water. I do this every day. I'm a little anal about it, I guess. I have a journal and I've been writing down all of my pH levels, my food levels, um, I started doing a temperature on the water as well to make sure it's staying at a good temperature and it's not getting too cool from the house. Each one of these little holes in here has your pods in your baskets. And because it's on, it's really wet, so I'm going to try and get some of the water out of it. And I'll bring this up closer. So this is the little pod that it comes with. And there's little hooks on here too, so they kind of lock in. There's a little notch inside the ring, and you clip it on there and then spin it around and it hooks in. And then this is what they call the media, or your pod. And it has a little hole down inside so you can drop your seeds down in there. So then when you put it back in, you just find the little notch on the bottom, and you can spin it right around and it's locked into place. With your kit, you will get these, and they're called Rapid Rooters, and there's 50. And with the iHarvest, there are 30 sections, so you will have some of these left over. I actually did personally buy another bag just because I wanted to have it on hand. I wasn't sure if a seed didn't work, if I would have to just get rid of the pod, but that's not the case. Um, I set this up at the end of September, started putting my seeds in the beginning of October, and today is October 24th, and there's been a couple that um, hadn't really taken off or done anything on this side, so I just took the little pot out or the media and put some more seeds in it, and they've been fine. So I think they're going to last quite a while um, until, you know, if that plant gets really big, and it's done, then you can swap them out. But like I said, you're gonna get 50. And a good tip for these is if you're not using them, there's some moisture in the bag and you really wanna keep them a little bit on the moist side. So I've been keeping them in a refrigerator down in the bottom drawer um, just to keep that moisture in the bag. So as the water rains down, it's giving your food and your plants, or it's giving your plants the perfect food and the perfect pH. And how you're going to get that is with your pH up and your pH down, and these do come with your kit. So as soon as you put your water in the bottom, which is about a 15 gallon tank, and I started about 12 gallons. Uh, you don't want to take your water past the little filter basket that I showed you, so just a little up below that. Um, and then if you have evaporation, whatever, you can add water to it. So I just wanted to make sure I wasn't taking that level too high. So I kept testing my water at the beginning, and this is what comes with it as well. And I actually wrote on here 5.8 to 6.5, which is where my pH levels want to be for brand new baby plants. And all you have to do is just pull the cap off. You're gonna to wanna to keep the cap on it at all times just so the little sensor doesn't ever dry out. You just pop it on, there's a little on button. Just stick it in the back of your water. And I am at 5.87. So I'll wait probably a day or so, see if it goes down any more than that, and then I can add some pH up to it as well. The other thing that you're going to get with it is your Maxi Grow. This is your food, your nutrients for your plants. And it does come with a little scooper, so don't miss the scooper. It is down inside the bag. And you get another tester, same as the pH. And this one has to be between 600 and 800 for baby plants. So same thing, just turn it on, stick it in. It will tell you what your um, particles of food are that are floating around in the water. Another thing I did not know with this until I did a little research, I started wondering if 
my water was a little too cool as my pods were feeling a little cold in the house. So I thought, well, I should have something floating in there for water temperature, not the case. This actually does have, if you um, hit the on button, and then there is a little shift key and you can go from your food to a temperature, or that's the temperature food. So you can flip this back and forth. So this one is kind of like a two in one. So that's kind of nice. Um, I did go to a hydroponic store and they said that these retail about 35 to $40 each. And those again, come in your kit. You're going to get uh, about 35 to 40 of the little baskets. Plus you're gonna get all of these little clips and then you just kind of pop them on, break them off here, put them in there and you're all good to go. So you do have a couple extras in case for some reason one of them breaks, but they're pretty sturdy. I don't think that's gonna be a problem. And also with the kit comes another pH testing, um, a little a bottle and a tube so you can squirt it out and it has this that you can like pull it out Put your water in there test it but I really like using this with these because then I know I've done one squirt two squirts whatever I need to do and I can keep track of that so you're going to have a timer for your lights and a timer for your pump and another thing that I added and this was something that I purchased on my own was a fish bubbler or a little wave maker and it was one that I found on Amazon that has a magnet and it's supposed to be for the outside of a fish tank and I put it inside in the corner and on the back of this are like cutouts or grooves that if you want to hide your timers you can do that behind there and that's where I have that magnet so I have my water in the base constantly moving when you set your timer up for your waterfall you want it 15 minutes on and 45 minutes off. So the water is only circulating for 15 minutes per hour. And then the rest of that 45 minutes, that water just sits in your tank kind of stagnant. And so I didn't really love that idea. I wanted to make sure my water was just constantly moving um, and it wasn't gonna build up any residue or anything inside the tank, which it hasn't. And it's been a couple weeks and I haven't had a problem with that at all. But that little fish bubbler was I think 20 bucks and it was, you know, I think worth it to have that down in there. So I'll go ahead and show you the lights and I'm gonna turn them on. It might kind of set my camera off a little bit, but in the base of here, you can see these, these cutouts down here. And this is so you can get your lights nice and close. When your baby plants are little and you're just getting the seedling, the closer your lights are, the less they have to stretch and reach for the sunlight. So it's gonna keep a nice short base and just let the plant fill out. And I have um, spicy lettuce in here going right now. I have kale, I have basil and dill, and that's another spicy lettuce. We just got a couple of baby strawberries. This is a Swiss chard that just popped up. And I have some lavender down here and then we have two new ones up here uh, this morning and those are rosemary and cilantro. So really exciting. Every morning you wake up and something grew overnight. So the lights will be on a timer, but if for some reason you need to turn them on or off manually, they have the little switches on the bottom. So I'm gonna push this one in nice and tight. Push this one in nice and tight. And you can see how bright she is. So as your plants grow, you can easily just slide your poles back and give those bigger plants not quite of a harsh sunlight. But right now, we don't want those babies to have to stretch for the sunlight. So your lights come with the light bar itself and the pole, and the only assembly with that is screwing the base and then these have little clips and they just snap on super duper easy. And the fact that you get the lights with it too is crazy. So I think that's everything. Um, also, I did notice, I had thought in a lot of the pictures or the reviews that the trellises were metal and they are not. They are plastic. 
The reason that they're plastic is everything is food grade plastic. So you don't get any corrosion um, in your tank. All the screws, the bolts, the clips, the everything is all food grade plastic. So you're not gonna have anything messing up your pH levels in your water. I am going to stop this video and then I will do one nice and close and add it to the end here so you can see um, some of these plants a little bit closer up. And a look at my calendar. I'm about 20 days from seed on some of them. And the other ones I'm about two weeks, a little less than two weeks because I did have some seeds that did not take or work really well. So I had to go back through, I kind of peeked down inside of the rapid rooter and I could tell nothing was growing so I added some seeds. And talk about seeds before I forget, you're going to get these as well. So you're going to get a little starter kit of herbs, some tomatoes, and some greens. The only reason I didn't use these is because they are a mix. So when you open up the salad mix, it's a whole bunch of different mix of seeds. And I really wanted to be picky and say, this is kale, this is spicy, spicy lettuce, this is basil, this is my dill. So with these, it's kind of like a surprise of what's going to come up where. And I'm really keeping track of all of that. So like I said, I'm journaling. I'm writing down what my pH levels are. I'm writing down what my PPM, which is your food. I'm writing down my PPM and now I'm keeping track of my water temperature. And then I'm just making little notes of, um, you know, who came out to play on what day um, when they were born um, and how many days from seed it took for each one which one was successful needed to be reseeded because I have a lot of different name brands of seeds as well and so I'm kind of keeping track of which ones. So don't know if you can hear that but the timer just clicked off so she ran her full 15 minutes and that's it. There's nothing to it. You just let it go. So if you're not home all day your lights are going to be on um, and your timer is going to run and it's just a quick test of your pH levels at night. So I will hopefully be doing more of these videos to keep you updated on how I like it. And again, if you're interested in purchasing one of these, they're around $800 and you can go to igworks.com and use coupon code grow with Angie, all one word, and save $50 off. So I hope you enjoy it. Leave me some comments and let me know if you have one or if you have any questions and I'll do the best I can to answer.